I feel guilty over many things that I have done or should have done. I expect to be punished. I am disappointed in myself. I blame myself for everything bad that happens. Uh, I have thoughts of killing myself, but I would not carry them out. In opening statements, defense attorney John Parker tells jurors that Sowell has been a model prisoner and deserves life in prison. But at the end of the day, when you make that personal moral decision, when you reach deep down inside to determine the appropriate sentence, we are confident that you will choose life. This always gets me when they say, oh, I was thinking about killing myself and doing this and that. Well, really? You didn't. And you then instead chose to kill 11 people instead. I mean, you get where I'm going with this. All right, Dan, what are, you, what are your thoughts you know, on that? I prosecute a lot of cases where psychological defenses were offered. Right. And it's usually something, a last resort defense, when there's no factual or legal defense. You have someone here who had a clear plan for what he did. He lured women to his yeah. home with drugs and alcohol. He told at least one of them that no one's going to care when you disappear because you're a drug addict. So he understood what he was doing. He knew enough to bury some of them in the backyard. So he thought this out. And you know, if someone's against the death penalty in all circumstances, that's one thing. But if right. we're going to have a death penalty, certainly the guy who murdered 11 women, raped some of them, strangled, I believe, all of them, it seems to me he's a, a good subject for the death penalty. What do you think? I mean... You know, Kim. I mean, as, as we all know, there, there's a it's a bifurcated case when it, when the prosecution is seeking mm -hmm. the death penalty, and, and we're seeing the penalty phase. And you know, in some respect, you, you just don't have people who didn't have either a dysfunctional, abusive childhood or whatever psychological issues or, or childhood or trauma, who go out and, and, and become serial killers. So, I mean, as soon as you get to this stage... His problem is his mom was overprotective, right. so he had his mom raise him. The mom was paying attention to him, said that he didn't let him have, I guess, enough friends or have friends. His your father abandoned him, but plenty of, of kids are raised with one parent. I know this, you know? <laughs> right. You know, and, and again, I'm, I'm sure his childhood probably wasn't Leave it to Beaver. But, but, the, but, but you know, that's to be expected whenever you hear the facts of this kind of case. So the, right. the, the whole point of a, a bifurcated trial is really to determine whether there, there is overwhelming evidence and mitigation that would make the death penalty as applied to this defendant, you know, basically cruel and unusual right. punishment. And there's really nothing uh, that I've seen in this case that would indicate that. Yeah, as Tom was saying, anyone who kills all these people is going to have psychological problems. You clearly problems. have some problems to begin right. with, or else you don't get here right. in the first place. You know, you don't get to the rodeo without a... Right, and the idea <laughs> that he would get credit for behaving well in prison once he's already killed 11 people seems ludicrous. I mean, the behaving well in prison thing helps out people who may be like a Plaxico Burris who had a gun charge and gets out because he behaved well in and prison. And gets to deal with the jet. But once you, once, you, million, yeah. once you kill 11 people... I don't think that how you behave in jail really should give you credit. It shouldn't have bearing and weight on it. Right. Absolutely, absolutely not. And then, you know, the other problem is everyone who, you know, invokes these psychological defenses, um, they can never quite explain how you have all these psychological deficiencies, yet you're able, you're capable of this meticulous premeditation mm -hmm. that we were taught, you know, how to law the girls into your apartment, what drugs to get, how to bury the bodies. What about military service? What do, you, what do you think about that? I mean, look, I, I'm, a, as you know, a, a proud veteran. I think I know, everybody yeah. who serves in the military um, is doing their country a great service. Well, but I, I would hope not. I would hope that the jury is not going to use his military service as a basis not to, uh, you know, to, to overlook the, the, the trauma that he's caused. But they, not only these victims, but the families. Might try to say it mitigates Tom and say that he has served his country and that he performed. I, I don't know exactly what the, his G military history is. Right. G I mean, given the facts of this case, I, I don't think that that anybody's military service should be a factor in mitigation when it comes to committing premeditated mm -hmm. murder. Yeah. I mean, um, you know. You know, it, it, it may have its place in other aspects of the criminal justice system, but the facts of this case are just way too heinous. All right, now what about this? This is an interesting case. I was talking about it um, yesterday on our new show on, on The Five. Um, Fox News has this story, the new Missouri law to forbid uh, Facebook friending amongst teachers and students. I mean, we're both parents. Are, are, do you have any kids? No. Not yet. Not yet. All right. Well, you can work on Hopefully that. Hopefully soon. <laughs> Hopefully soon? Well, within that's, the next few years. That's why, I look oh, okay. so, that's why I look so young, happy, and energetic. He's got no kids. <laughs> what are you saying about me? <laughs> oh, you? Well, you're, you're, you're in your own class. <laughs>
<laughs> but what do you think about this idea? I don't think teachers should be friending, you know, kids I, I, on Facebook. Honestly, I don't, I don't think so either. But my problem is I don't necessarily know that you need a law. I mean, why couldn't this be dealt with through the local Department of Education, where you just make it a breach of your employment contract? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, the principal in the school, the superintendent of the district, just puts out a policy that you're not to, not to be friendly on social networks with students. Well, it's all social media, right? So they don't. You can't. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't put your. I guess like you know your teacher on your Twitter thing or follow right. your teacher. Your teacher can't follow you on there. Nothing or, private. Not, yeah, yeah, no right. texting your teacher. Yeah. It seems well Give me an A. It seems well intentioned, <laughs> yeah. but I think it's an overreach here. The primary purpose of this law was to mm -hmm. make schools report sex abuse allegations. How are they doing quickly. with that? Well, they weren't doing very well, so the law said you have to report it within 24 hours. Uh -huh. And then within the law, they said you also can't have any social media contact. I think we have to remember that a lot of teachers use social media in constructive, helpful ways with students. Sure. Students don't have um, homes maybe where they have solid parent figures, and a teacher can really be a great source of strength and encouragement. And to say that no one can have any contact seems like an overreach. Well-intentioned, but mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit too much. Well, the, go ahead. The, the only thing is I, I think there is a provision in the law which basically says, you know, it doesn't prevent a teacher from having a class website mm -hmm. or perhaps even a class Facebook page where everything is transparent. What they're right. trying to avoid is sort of one-on-one -on -one communication because you're right, the vast majority of teachers would probably use that in a beneficial, benign way. But we all know that there are some exceptions to the rule. And, you know, you know if, I, if I have a... I don't want my daughter being Facebook friends with her, you know, 40-year-old male teacher when she's in high school. It's just a something oh, not right. Absolutely. Thank you. So, but but I, I, I do think <sighs> that this could have been dealt with through the school districts themselves. I don't think it has to go up to the state legislature. I mean, everybody texts and email. I do. I'm like, you know, my son's in camp right now. He's in nursery school before, and I text his teacher. In fact, but not coming to school today <laughs> at 9.30. School started at 8.30. <laughs> but, you know, but you, to get the message, then it's, it's convenient, but it's fine for parents, but not for the kids. So Senate Bill 54 uh, states, teachers cannot establish, maintain, or use a work-related website unless it is available to school administrators and the child's legal custodian. So that's like you said, like a school website or something like that, or class, maybe class blog or website. Teachers also cannot have a non-work related website that allows exclusive access with a current, here's the interesting part, or former student. So say somebody, you know, graduates and mm -hmm. what, 20 years down the line, when does it become okay? It seems hard to enforce that. Obviously they're setting this big mm -hmm. standard to try to catch the people who do fall within it and do bad things, try to, you know, prey on underage children in the school, but sure. they've cast a, a wide, wide net here. That's the problem. That's right. It might be mind. overboard. I mean, overbroad. Hopefully, I, I, would, I would think that the legislation intent was to say until the child reaches the age of... Well, they're also going to go by the honor system, adult, Tom, is what we've heard. I think it protects the teachers, though, too, Kimberly, because, you know, if you're a teacher and you're, you're a Facebook friendship with an underage student, there's all sorts of unintended consequences. Sure. Um, so, I, you know, if you're, if you're a teacher and, and you have any sense whatsoever, you shouldn't even need yeah. this law. You should know to stay far away from that to begin with. Sure. I, I get what you're saying. And now this is an interesting thing because what about teachers who have friended students prior to this uh, new law passing, right? Supposed to um, go into effect. Yeah, unfriend them. Right. It's like all those yeah. girls I meet out. All of a sudden, like, <laughs> they all, they happen, all yeah. They <laughs> just disappear a week Is that sad? It's, it's, it's terrible. It's kind of sad. It hurts my ego. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're doing all right. Yeah. We would. We're not too worried about you. Okay, uh, I see we have our friend David Lee Miller um, offset here waiting to come on set because you've got the very latest for us on the missing girl, the case we talked about in the beginning of the program. So we'll take a quick commercial break. David Lee Miller, right after.